What's going on everybody? It's your boy C4 today bringing you part 2, round 2 slash some kind of round 3 picks for my 2016 connected franchise mode in Madden where I will of course be taking over the Philadelphia Eagles without Chip Kelly. Uh, so you haven't checked out the first round, definitely go do that now so you kind of know where we're at. So starting out the second round, the Tennessee Titans with the first overpick take Ezekiel Elliott out of the University of Ohio State. They finally get a legit running back. Up now at number 2 is the Cleveland Browns. And I have their second and third round pick. Their second round pick, they'll get Mike Thomas out of Ohio State, staying with in-state. In the third round, getting another wide receiver because the wide receiving core is garbage, getting Braxton Miller out of Ohio State. Uh, coming up now with the third overall pick in the second round, it's going to be Tyler Boyd uh, going to the San Diego Chargers, wide receiver out of Pitt. Uh, they lost their kind of big target in um, uh, Malcolm Floyd this offseason, so they kind of replace it there. Now the Dallas Cowboys up at number four, and they're going with their they're gonna get their backup quarterback to sit behind Tony Romo and Groom. And that's Christian Hackenberg out of Penn State. Also in the third round, they're gonna get a defensive tackle, Austin Johnson. I, we haven't we don't have that yet. Austin Johnson, the defensive tackle out of Penn State, will go there as well. Uh, pick number five, the Jaguars. They get Vaughn Bell out of Ohio State, as you just saw. They're moving right along. Six overall, I got two picks here for the Ravens. Uh, they're gonna get strong safety, Jeremy Cash out of Duke. Incredibly underrated uh, safety, I believe. Uh, in my opinion, I guess I don't believe, I know. And they're going to get also in the third round, left outside linebacker Sua Cravens. No one really knows if he's a safety or outside linebacker, uh, but, uh, you know, he's definitely worth playing on a team. Now at, the, at number seven, the 49ers are finally getting their quarterback. They're going to get Carson Wentz out of Lord knows North Dakota State. Uh, I think he's a real sleeper prospect. A lot of guys say his draft stock is rising. That's what happened there. Uh, the Dolphins at eight. We have two picks here. So in the second round, they're going to get right guard. They're going to try to improve their interior of their uh, offensive line, and they're going to get Vidal Alexander at LSU. Uh, excellent pick up there. And then also in the third round, they're going to get maybe one of my favorite middle linebackers this year's draft class, and that's Tyler Matakavich from Temple. Uh, good pick up there, Miami, if I do say so myself. Uh, coming up at number nine, uh, it's going to be the Tampa Bay Bucs. They're going to try to improve their secondary by getting Kendall Fuller out of Virginia Tech. Uh, very, very solid pi uh, pick up there. Uh, now coming up at number 10, it is going to be the New York Giants, and they're going for a one-hit wonder, but an absolute freak beast. If he can continue it, his uh, form in the pros, he's going to be a monster. That's going to be Carl Nassib out of Penn State uh, to try to help their pass rush oppose JPP. Obviously, we don't even know what JPP's situation is uh, with the, you know his fucking club he got going on there. Now at number 11, it's going to be the, the Chicago Bears. You know, Alshon Jeffrey might, may or may not come back, but they need to get wide receivers, so the best on the board is going to be Farrell Cooper from South Carolina. A little bit undersized, but I think, uh, you know, why, why not replace a South Carolina guy with another South Carolina guy? Uh, at number 12, we have two picks here for the Saints. Uh, so in their second round, they're going left guard. They're going to get Cody Whitehair uh, from Kansas State. Uh, some regarded as one of the best guards in the uh, draft this year. And then also in the third round, because they had the worst kicker, worst kicking game in the NFL, and they're in a fucking dome. They're going to get Roberto Aguayo in the third round. I mean, guy's the best college kicker of all time. Makes sense. Uh, going up at number 13, uh, for my Philadelphia Eagles, according to my draft, they don't have a second round pick, so I'm just going to you know kind of move it up as well as... Uh, kind of some other prospects I filled in. So obviously they're going to get Joshua Garnett, the right guard from uh, Stanford. Also, I just have guys I created. Eric Stryker, the left outside linebacker, and Richard Higgins, the wide receiver out of Colorado State. All these guys that I had in How I'd Fix the Eagle video series, which you guys all enjoyed, so hopefully you saw that. I had these guys get them in the later rounds, and of course, because I'm going to be the Eagles, I want to make it a little bit more in-depth, so I go ahead and get these guys here. So let's just figure... I'll find them here. Um, like I said, five... Uh, yeah, so far, so far, so good. I've done all these teams that only fucked up once in the first round with the Atlanta Falcons. So, uh, moving on next to the Oakland Raiders, they're going to get, you know, the absolute freak monster. Probably the biggest freak is J. Ron Kirst, the I believe he's the nephew of Javon Kirst, former legendary Philadelphia Eagle at strong safety. Hopefully, you can replace uh, Charles Woodson. Up next is the, is the St. Louis Rams, and they get their quarterback. They're going Cardale Jones, pretty much just because he's the best available quarterback left. Uh, I mean, him, it's basically him and Cody Kessler. So I think Cardell Jones has a lot more upside. Then for one of the steals of my draft, at number 16, the Detroit Lions are getting Emmanuel Ogba, the defensive end from Oklahoma State. Look at 77 overall, halfway through the second. They get this. There's always one sleeper, so we had to give it to him, keeping it as realistic as possible. The Falcons are not getting skipped this time. So the 17th pick in the second round, obviously in the first round, you didn't see it, they get Jonathan Bullard. 17th round, they get the best tight end in the draft in Hunter Henry. Uh, moving up to number 18, the Indianapolis Colts try to get some youth and get a monster in the backfield. Hopefully, you know, it doesn't play like the last Alabama running back they had. And that's going to be Derrick Henry, uh, the running back, obviously, out of the University of Alabama. 
Uh, going to number 19, it's going to be the Chicago uh, Buffalo Bills taking the best free safety in this year's draft class. Uh, one, C4, best free safety. And that's going to be Darian Thompson out of Boise State. Uh, you know, he's kind of a, somewhat of a sleeper, but again, really, really solid free safety. Uh, now up at number 20 is going to be the New York Jets. And they're going to improve their interior offensive line. They're going to get Landon Turner out of uh, the University of North Carolina. Some regard him as one of the best guards in this year's draft class. Even first round prospect. But I think they get him here at number 20. Number 21, the uh, Washington Redskins. Uh, so this is where they're going to get their pass rush. They need pass rush. Just as much pass rush as they can get. So I'm getting Shalik Calhoun here at right defensive end. And at the end of this video, I'm going to explain what happened in the first video of the first round with the Redskins. So stay tuned for that if you're a Redskins fan. Uh, so number 22, the Houston Texans. They get a running back kind of insurance for uh, Arian Foster. They get Devontae Booker, the running back out of Utah. Uh, at 23, it's going to be the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to get some outside linebacker pass rush. Help to have on the other side of Anthony Barr. And they're going to get that within Noah Spence, the former Ohio State man, now out of Eastern Kentucky. Uh, some off-field issues, but he's still pretty good. At number 24, the Cincinnati Bengals. They're getting some interior defensive line help. Paco's not really getting it done, so they get Adolphus Washington again out of Ohio State. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of Ohio State players. Uh, now going on to number 25, the Kansas City Chiefs. Get some outside linebacker help. Uh, cause I, just in case they lose Tom Bahali, I think they're going to get Joshua Perry uh, out of Ohio State as well. Uh, now I'm moving on to number 26, the Green Bay Packers. I'm going to have them getting defensive end Jonathan Allen, uh, I believe, out of Alabama. Uh, you know, there's just so many good, pretty much Alabama, Ohio State. Half their fucking team is going to the NFL this year, especially on defense. Uh, now moving on to number 27, uh, the Broncos have a pretty shady running back situation. Those guys are the most hot and cold guys I've seen all goddamn year. Uh, so number 27, I have them getting Kenneth Dixon out of Louisiana Tech. I believe he has like the most running back touchdowns in college football history. Very, very solid, good hands, uh, and, you know, a talented runner. So at number 28, uh, the Arizona Cardinals get a middle middle linebacker that's really, really interesting because he's undersized, but an absolute monster, and that is Scooby Wright. Uh, moving to 29 with the kind of uh, LeGarrette Blunt situation, a little bit cloudy. The New England Patriots are going to go running back, and they're going to get Alex Collins out of Arkansas. Uh, pretty solid running back, if I do say so myself. Uh, moving to number 30, the Seattle Seahawks getting some wide receiver help. I just took the best wide receiver available. Like I said, this is not my actual mock draft because Sterling Shepard uh, is too similar to Tyler Lockett. I believe they're going to want someone a little bit bigger. But just from who I made and you know how everything worked out, Sterling Shepard to the Seahawks. At number 31, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers try to improve their interior offensive line and get Spencer Drango out of Baylor. And finally, number 32, the Carolina Panthers get maybe the biggest project but most upside player in this year's draft class. And that is going to be Mr. Sean Oakman out of Baylor. So that there you go. That kind of wraps it up. Uh, like I said, I missed. I'm going to have to actually go back to make sure because I, I didn't actually do it. I'm going to make a little bit of note. I missed the Bullard pick to the Jonathan Bullard to the Atlanta Falcons, the first round pick. And because the Redskins had Andrew Billings, uh, who is yet to declare, that kind of leaves us with Shaq Lawson, who's you know, highly, highly regarded, probably a top 15 pick in this year's draft. I don't know why I'm not Michael Buchanan. He, as you can see, he's the guy above in the 77. So that's pretty much what I did after this video. Uh, because, obviously, Andrew Billings is there, I just I, want, I had Shaq Lawson uh, to the Redskins anyway. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and make the division a little bit more competitive. We're going to give them both. Shaq Lawson and Andrew Billings. That is the Washington Redskins. So they're getting two massive helps on their interior offensive line. So there you have it, guys. This is my second round of my 2016 draft. It's probably better than most of these computers would have been able to draft. Uh, so don't take it too hard. I will do an official mock draft video later on uh, with actual reasonings. Uh, so at the end of this video, you guys can see the roster share download. Go do that. Smash that like on the roster share. Let's make it as popular as possible. Make sure you subscribe to Beast Mode TV if you're new. Until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Back up.